don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today I have the fruits of my practice sessions with the new sewing machine um, with this, um, my first real kind of junk journal, if you like. Um, I've never really made a junk junk journal before um, <clears throat> and I've certainly never used a sewing machine to sew bits and pieces inside a junk journal. So I was going to, well I'll, I'll show you this, uh, what I've done um, and then I will go on to something else in a little while. Anyway, so this is my, I'm calling this the memoranda journal because that is predominantly the paper pad that I used, the Tim Holtz paper pad that I used for some of the signatures and for some of the ephemera that I've put inside the journal. So it is around about six and a half by uh, about eight and a half, three quarters ish, thereabouts. The usual kind of size that I make my journals at. And as you can see, it's covered with um, fabric. So this is the correspondence fabric I think from um, Tim Holtz that range of fabric that he released it's done front and back but also the fabric closure is also in the matching fabric which has been stitched and added into so it runs completely underneath right the way through so it's a sturdy as I don't know what. So that is the closure. And I, as I showed before, there's a book plate on the spine and there is a um, removable label that you can take out and put your own name in if you want to um, on that spine there. That's just a piece from one of the pages um, that just happened to say memoranda. So I thought that would be nice to actually add it in. So yeah, so I've stitched like a nice tape um, version it's all hemmed and double well it's all edged if you like which isn't bad considering i'm not used to using a sewing machine so let's open it up so <clears throat> on the inside we've got the front or the inside papers um, are the tim holtz paper all distressed but there's also a pocket a tuck spot pocket which has been stitched there you go so it was stitched first and then stitched onto the piece of paper. So it's all stitched and tucked. Um, I'll come back to that in a minute. So for each signature, and there are five signatures inside the journal, there's about a hundred and, I can't remember, it was 160 or 180 pages in this journal. Um, the front and back of each signature is the Tim Holtz paper. And there is a pocket on the front of each one and also on the back of each one. So there is a pocket on each and those pockets have also been stitched on, as you can see, stitched. I've not left all of the, the tails. I've left a bit, but not a lot because th there was a lot. Trust me, there was a lot. Um, I made sure that I'd left lots of cotton to make sure that I didn't get snarled up or run out or whatever. Um, so each one of those signatures, like I said, has a pocket on the front and a pocket on the on the the end. So there's ten pockets there. There's one on the front and there's also one on the back, which is the corresponding piece to that one to that one. See, I made sure it matched nicely. So I'll put those little cabinet cards back in there. Um, stitched in through buckram cloth. So it is very sturdy, very, very sturdy indeed. Hidden spine, obviously. And then we'll get on to the actual signatures. So on the inside of the very first one, you've got one of those folio pockets, stitched, but done with the two rather than the one, which is what I practiced with on that video a couple of weeks ago. 
and I got lots and lots and lots of comments of people saying, oh, it looks better if they could use it with a two. So that's what I've done. But for the second one, rather than put an eyelet on it, I've actually put like a little decorative brad on that one. And the one on the very inside back is different again. So on the very, very inside, you've got one there and you've also got one on the very, very last page on the back of that pocket page there. So the front and back of each signature is the Tim Holtz paper with a pocket on. Obviously it's double sided as you can see. So exercise was to actually use the stitching, to put stitching in there, but also to use up some of my Tim Holtz paper because I've got loads kicking about. Um, inside each signature then there is um, some craft paper signature pages. So blank, there's also some graph paper, some real graph paper. This is where the junk bit comes in. You've got some um, writing pages on the craft. And then on this page, I've added another stitched on, another tuck spot. Got some music paper from old um, music sheets. More craft graph. Um, ledger paper, more craft writing space on that one. So that's a proper vintage ledger um, from 1923. And it's real. It's a real ledger sheet from 1923. I've got a stack of old um, like ledger sheets and some other um, very, very interesting junk bits that I've put in this journal. So that kind of then is repeated through to that first signature and then you've got that final sheet on that first signature and inside that took pocket I've got this little mini manila envelope that I've put a panel from that um, memoranda paper pad and I had some numbers kicking about left over from when I did uh, the tag from one of the mid-month mini missions for the mission inspiration those numbers so I stitched one of those numbers onto the panel first, then went all the way around the panel and then glued the panel onto the envelope and then put the envelope into there. I'll come back to those envelopes in a minute. Um, and then we've got these cabinet cards, which I created, but actually they're journaling cards. So on the back of each one, you've got space to write. And I've put, I think there's like six kicking about inside the journal. So the six of those kicking about inside the journal. So going on to the second signature, uh, sig yeah, second signature as we go through the pages. So we've got more graph paper, more music paper. Again, ledger paper, there's some other bits and then another tuck spot on the craft paper until you get through to, again, the end signature, the end page, and there's another one of those journaling cabinet cards. Another one of those little mini envelopes that have had the panel stitched and then glued on, otherwise you'd be stitching the envelope together. Yeah, I know, I know. Yes, I did do it, trust me. Um, and then we go all the way through again. So we've got next signature with pretty much the same kind of thing in. And then inside here, um, this piece is a real piece of vintage um, ephemera. Let's see if I can get the front of it, there you go. Um, and it was originally um, a registration paper for a mine in South Africa dating from 1946. And I have a stack of these. So these are registered in the UK for I think it might be British Rhodesia or some one of the British territories in South Africa before we handed it all back or um, whatever happened. Um, so, so oh, there you go, Southern Rhodesia. There you go. There's even a stamp on the bottom. African investment. Oh, and I've got a stack of these from uh, a lady that sent me them. There was tons and tons in a loft. Um, uh, she sent me them a couple of years ago. I can't remember the lady's name. I think Jean rings a bell. Can't remember. Sorry. I know, I'm awful. Um, so anyway, so she sent me this stack. So I dated April 1946, 11th of April 1946. 
So there's a couple of those thrown in here as well. Um, and then we've just got, again, plenty of paper, more of those little envelope, secret tuck spot kind of areas that have, again, been stitched all the way through. So just flick through, lots of crap paper, another one of those um, land kind of registry things. Uh, this one was registered in Scotland, so three shillings on this one. What's the date on that one? Um, 6th of December 1944. You can just see it on the back. Yeah, 6th December 1944. And again, another Southern Rhodesian stamp on there. And it is a real stamp. So these seals um, are all the real bits of paper, all stamped. Like I said, that, that is a real... Thank you, Mr. Bentley. You can get yourself into bed if you want to. You don't need me to let you in. I can see him standing on the bed, looking at me as if to say, I needed to lift up the duvet, Dad, so I can get in. Go on, you can get yourself in. There you go. Nose under first. Yeah, I can see you, monkey. Leave him to it. So, and then we go on, and then there's more original um, music paper. Yeah, Christmas don't be like the chipmunks. I don't know what day that run that goes from. Another one of those um, cabinet card journaling spots or journaling cards. And again, I've stitched the tuck spot pocket on this one, but I've done it. I've done a double one. So you've actually got an infill piece and then the outer piece, which was originally st originally stitched. Then I stitched that one on top, and then that got stitched onto the actual page itself. I did tell you this was a practice on the sewing machine journal to see whether or not I could do it. And there are some, still some little tail ends hanging about. Um, I'm not gonna pull on any. <laughs> graph paper, more craft paper, and then another Tim Holtzy pocket. Another pocket, another signature. And again, go through more pages. More stitched tuck, pot, tuck spots. Oh, what we've got the dates on this one. Let's have a look. 10th of January 1945, that one. And again, another Southern Rhodesian stamp, a real stamp. Um, I've even got the date on that one. So it's signed, sealed, and delivered by the above named Matilda Beatrice Chilvers. Have, you couldn't make that up, could you? And there's her signature. There, look. And it says, of address 82 Crawley Road, Horsham, Solicitor's Managing Clerk. Fabulous stuff. Matilda Beatrice Chilvers, fabulous name. Music paper, and then there's the other half of that investment sheet. So this is the Westminster Bank Limited. Um, so what is it? 100 fully paid up shares of one shilling each numbered from, da -da -da -da, Dated the 2nd of February 1945. Fantastic. So these are obviously shares purchased for that, um, that land or mine in South Africa, Southern Rhodesia. All good stuff. Fabulous. Love it. Like I said, I've got plenty of those. I've got loads of those sheets. Um, so we go on then. More junky journal paper. And then finally, we have that other folio kind of pocket on there. Um, all stitched, again, up and down, they've been added in. And then you've got your tuck spot pockets with that journaling card at the very, very end. So I think what they call this, because I haven't, or I haven't tea dyed any of the pages, because they're craft, I haven't tea dyed them. So I think this is what they call a naked journal. There's not too many embellishments there's, it, there's still plenty of room there you go look for you to add more to bulk this out so yeah it is kind of a naked journal and like i said you've got that matching fabric um closure that's the same fabric as the actual cover and i've got a ton and a half of um, fabric 
um, that I'm going to use to cover the journals. So that one's done and dusted. I'm already on the way with this next one. So this is the Skulls and Roses one. So um, that's already covered and ready to go. I'm going to start, well I've already started working on the signatures for this journal. So this one will be coming in the next few weeks, but this one is done and ready to go. But before we go, um, it is on the website. Um, obviously there is another one. So um, it's going to be first come, first served on this. And if you want it, it's there on the website. Once it's gone, it's gone. I don't have any more paper and any more of this cloth left. That's gone. I have got one other piece of Tim Holtz fabric, but that's the one that's got insects and stuff on it, which I could do another journal um, with that cloth on, with similar kind of inclusions, if that's what you're wanting. But just drop me an email if that's what you want. But like I said, it's going to be first come, first serve. One, this is gone, it's gone. So, because now that I've done it and it works and I know what I'm doing, <laughs> there's no point in me hanging on to it. So that's that. The other thing was while I was doing the ephemera and I was messing about with these envelopes, uh, these little mini envelopes, let me get my ruler and give you some dimensions on these. These are about four and a half by about three inches in metric that's 12 centimetres by about seven and a half centimetres, so about three inches. I already said that in inches didn't I? Yes, three inches. Seven and a half centimetres by 12 centimetres, so three inches by just under, or just over, probably about four and three quarters. And then Manila. While I was going through all my stash of stuff that I've got in boxes um, that I haven't even unpacked or looked in since moving into the new house, I found a massive stash of these. Now these are craft, well they're like a cross between craft and Manila um, paper and they are four inches by four inches or thereabouts four inches by four inches so four inches that way but a little bit taller that way because you've got your flap as well and, and I've got this huge stash of these but they're British wage envelopes so you'd have your cash money if you get paid cash in hand back in the day and um, before everything was transferred into the bank um, you'd have your wages, your notes, paper money and a few coins in with your paper pay slip which told you how much money you've earned, how many hours you've done, what tax you'd paid and all that kind of stuff inside or written actually on the envelope itself and I've got loads of them. Um, so what I've done is I've put these um, on the website but what I was going to do is I was going to show you um, what I did to decorate these up to use them for like I did with this one um, and I was going to make one up ready for the next the next journal so let me just grab my sewing machine and that kind of stuff and I'll be right back but before I do that let me just bring in my trimmer right so four inches by four inches so I've got a couple of pieces of Tim Holtzy paper and I want to add this chappy onto the front of that envelope so I've already marked it out at four or just under four, centi four centimetres, four inches. I can't talk properly today. Um, and there. So, theoretically, now that I've got that, I could just, if I wanted to, stick that down onto that envelope. And then I've got some great little an envelope tuck spot to put in a junk journal. But if I want to go just that little bit extra, then using these envelopes, like I said, these are on the website now, if you want some, because um, British wage envelopes, yeah, um, I know you won't be able to get those in the States, uh, or Australia, or wherever. People in the UK probably know where to get them, but people elsewhere, they might find them useful for the junk journals, which is why I've put them on the website, and also because I want to get rid of them. But I want to stitch this, so let me just go and grab my sewing machine, and then I will be right back. Okay, so we've got dual camera action going on right this very moment. So I've got my envelope and I've got the piece of paper. So what I want to do, because I can't stitch directly 
through the envelope because obviously it's going to close the envelope up so I want to just go around the edges. So the cotton that I've got in at the moment is it's kind of like a, well, it's brick red. It's a brick red colour. So and I have threaded through, uh, already pre-threaded through the, the cotton so we're all ready to go and thank you so much to everybody who offered um, their advice on what I was doing wrong <laughs> um, the, on the last one with missing out bits under here and, and that kind of stuff um, but like I said I've got it let's get that back in camera but hopefully that's not going to um, go out of focus when I put my hand in there it probably will do now just knowing my look so all I'm going to do is just put the needle down and then I've got it on to um, zigzag so I'm just going to go all the way around so I'm going to stop it about there lift that up just turn it round and then start again leave the needle where it is couldn't I? Be quicker. can just snip that bit of cord and then that's it done okay so what I'm left with now is that piece of sewn paper that's got that zigzag all the way around I've got a little bit of threads there so if you like having all the threads you can leave them as they are if you don't just snip them off like that I've got my distressing, so I'm just going to get a little bit of distressing and then just go around the edge with that. Mundo. and then bring in that envelope grab some glue and then I can just put some glue on the back just put a little bit going over the stitch in just to stop it from kind of unraveling and you can put a little bead just on the back Get your envelope and then you can drop that down. Got a little bit of wiggle room just to centre it up. And let that dry. Or if you want, you can just dirty up the edge of that envelope again. Close it, go around the flap, and there you go. You've got a really nice decorated little 
tuck spot that you can use in your junk journals for next to no effort at all. But if you don't want to do the stitching, don't do the stitching. But at the acute little size for adding into your junk journals, let me just have a quick look and I'll show you what they look like in comparison to the page size. So if we go to, let's say that one, and I stuck that down there. Oop, let's just bring that full page in. Let me zoom out again. There we go. So in comparison to the size of the page, they're a nice size just to add in. Now this is what we call like an A5 size journal but your American size, if you're in the States and you're using eight and a half by 11, they're not going to be that much different. Not that much different at all. But how cool is that? There you go. So again, those little wage packets are on the website too, as well as this journal. So I hope you've enjoyed that little look, flip through into the memoranda journal and those little envelope pockets. If you have, please want to get the video a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. It's all from me for now. I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. Thank you.